Hello everyone! Woo! In today's episode, we're gonna learn on how to detect collision with objects as well as interacting with them. Let's dive in. What is collision, right? So collision is as simple as two rocks scratching each other, right? So we're gonna learn how to do this in our game. And by rocks, I mean the player and an object. Let's say we need to open a, a chest of gold, right? Um, or a door, or a lever, or anything else. So think of it as the player coming close to an object that actually solid, and then we want to do something with it. So the first thing we're going to do is write the collision detection script and then extend it to something else. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about inheritance, which is a really important thing in programming. First of all, we need to create a script. Let's go ahead and create one. Let's call it collidable object, right? Let's open it up. Here we go. First of all, let's delete all this stuff and explain what is a collidable object. A collidable object is going to be the base attribute for anything that is collidable. And in our case, we're talking about the player colliding with stuff. So that would be this stuff. These stuff are basically going to be game objects with colliders. That's it. We should just detect the collision. In order to do this, we will start to determine what stuff do we need. Right off the bat, we will need colliders, right? Here we go. So let's make sure that we have private collider 2D because our game is 2D. And let's call it collider. That's good. Second thing we need to do is we need to catch this collider. And let's do this in the start method. And we put this in here. We have to fetch this collider. And in this tutorial, I'm going to put the collider part of the game object. So to do this, we have to click write collider, get component, collider 2D. This will make sure that we fetch the collider from the same game object. If you have the collider on a different game object, make sure to do it like this. Add this as serializable field, remove this one, and then manually drag and drop it in the inspector. But I'm going to put it in the same game object. It will be much easier. Next thing we have to do is do the collision detection. And we have to do it every frame. So we're going to go with update. Inside update, we have to call the overlap collider, which is part of the collider itself. So we write the collider, that overlap collider. And as soon as we open this, we're going to see we need two items. Uh, it has two variations. I'm going to use the second one because it uses list. I like lists more than arrays. So it needs two inputs. It needs something called contact filter 2D and the list of collider 2D. So the first thing is an attribute that determines who do we need to collide with and what are their settings and properties. And we'll see what it, what it does in a second. And the second part is the results. So whatever thing we've collided with, we store it in this list here. Let's start creating these fields. Let's go private, contact, filter 2D, let's call them filter, and private, list, collider 2D, let's call it uh, collided objects, right? That's good. Let's uh, pass in the stuff that we need, the filter, and the collided objects. Now we've done this method, what it's going to do, it's going to go ahead and look for anything that collides with it, with these attributes, and store them in this list. What we're going to do is we're going to look up if we actually did collide with something. One way to do this is to check if we have anything in the list, or we can check the count of the list. But I'm going to go ahead and write for each variable O inside the collidable objects. This will only run if we have something inside. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and write debug.log collided with and we're going to put past the name of the object here o dot name right this is not the final way of the script but we're going to just stop here and test it back in here all right so let's uh, find out some object that we can interact with right let's go ahead and uh, use this box okay let's use the middle one because i don't want any monsters so uh, i'll let me just go ahead and see where is the end of the thing. I think it's that's good enough. So we have this box. I, I would call it chest. Gold. Chest. Closed. Right? Here we go. 
let's go ahead and create a 2D sprite, whatever it is. Go ahead, look for chest, and we've got it. Um, don't worry, this is behind because we've got our own self um, like sorting layers here. So in order to put it in front, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sorting layer. Let's call it interactables. And keeping in mind that these layers, they are sorted in a way that this the floor it would be in the back and then the walls would be in the front and the character in the front and interactables in the front. Let's keep this in here, see how it looks. If I click here, so that means the player will always be in front of the interactables, which I think it makes more sense. So let's call this chest and call it chest, have it as interactable, that's amazing. Let's add the collidable script and we need to add the collider to the script, which is this one. Before we go ahead and test it, we need to make sure that we set the filter properly. So in order to expose a private field into the inspector, we just write serializable field, the serializable field before it. So we got this thing here, we got this thing here, good stuff. We have the filter. So we want to make sure that we only collide with the player, right? Here we go. And we need to do something else here. I forgot to mention, this list is going to store all the stuff that we collided with. And I want to make this as least consuming as possible. As a matter of fact, I know that we have only one player. I'm going to make the collision narrow down to one object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here, create new and instantiate it and give it only one item. This will make sure that it will store only one object. So the first thing that actually gets collided with it, it will get stored here. I think that's good enough. Coming back here, click play and see what happens. All right, so we have the player here and we have the chest. If we come here and start touching the chest, you might notice that, all right, what why am I going through this one? It's because previously we have set up something called blocking. It will actually stop the player movement to come inside the thing. So in order to do this, we can back here, we choose block move. Let's clear it out. And as soon as we come here, we see that actually we cannot go in anymore. And then we have the D box in here. Voila, we have ourselves a collidable object. So right now let's create a method, call it on collided, right? Collided. In here, we're gonna pass in the game object and let's call it collided object. We're gonna make sure that we pass in the object that we collide with. This is a type of collider 2D, so we need to actually get the game object and pass it in here. Again, we need to make sure that this is printing the proper stuff. Why I did this is because this will separate the functionalities in the sense that we can use this later on in something else. Now we have set up this class, we need to prepare it for inheritance. And inheritance is when another class takes this class as a parent and uses all its fields and methods, basically everything. And before we do this thing, we need to make sure that the methods are usable. And to do this, we have to make sure that we put the prefix virtual. And whenever we put virtual, we have to make sure that the method is either protected or public. And uh, the difference is protected, it doesn't get used by other scripts, by public will be exposed to other scripts. We'll make sure that it's protected because we, we don't want anybody else playing with this. So let's make sure that this is all the same as this one. We have set up this script. It's now ready to be inherited. Let's go back. All right, so we set up the collidable object and the next step is to make it interactable. So we finished the part where we collide with it. Now we have to make the logic where we listen to the input of the user while colliding and do something. Let's create a new script called interactable inter interactable object. Mm -hmm. You can do the namings as as you want. Uh, just I'm just going with the generic names. We've got the script. Let's remove everything and we start the inheritance. So inheritance is basically a class taking from another class. It's visible in here. We can see that interactable object is inheriting from mono behavior. We want to remove this and put 
collidable object. And if we go to collidable object, we see that collidable object is taken from mono behavior. So we're taking everything that we need from mono behavior plus we're taking all these stuff. Let's see what happens, right? Let's go back to Unity, go to the chest, remove the collidable object and add the interactable object. As soon as we do this, we will have everything, like all the same stuff. Let's move it up. And we make sure that this thing should be player. Where is it? Here we go. You'll notice that it will do exactly what it does as before, as you see. Uh, plus, we forgot to put this as a block. Why? Because we only inherited and we haven't done anything. So what we want to do is we want to use everything in the collidable object, but we want to make changes in here. Whenever we collide with something, we will listen to the input of the player and then see if he clicked interact, we interact, right? That's going to be easy. But you'll say, how can I use this method, right? It's quite simple. You will write the same thing as you have in here, right? Here we go. But instead of virtual, you have to go ahead and write override. What this does, it's going to go up to the parent object, which is collidable object, and override everything in here. Don't do anything here. Do all the stuff in here. So what happens is if I save this thing, go back to Unity and play, we will see one different, right? Let's clear this one. If I collide with the object, there are no debug statements, which is properly executed because I overrided that method and told it to do nothing. So everything in here will not be executed. You might say, what if I want to have this logic here, right? And then I want to do my logic. It's quite simple. All you have to do is write base, which access the parent object, and then call the same object on collided. And we have to pass the input, which is this one, in here. So let's write something in here. Let's write three access so we can see the difference. We're going to see this here. We're going to see that it's calling the parent object and as well as calling our object. That's beautiful. But in my case, I don't want this debug statement. So I can just remove this base on collided. And let's remove this one here. The next thing we need to do is we need to do the interaction logic. To do the logic, we have to listen to the input. And the first thing we have to do is look for the input that get key and I'm going to use key code that E I'm going to use the, the key E E a little as the main interaction button so whenever we do this we have to call this method right on interact here we go so we go on interact and let's go ahead and write debug clock interact with name so this will uh, write us the name of the object that we are interacting with. Let's see how it works. So we got our interactable object in here and it's part of chest, right? So here we go, let's go play. As soon as we come into this one, you'll see we don't have any debugs, which I did that on purpose. But if we click E, we're gonna have this interact with chest. And if I open this one, you'll see we have a lot of interact with chest, which is not good, right? We don't want to keep interacting with the object all the time. And this is happening because it's calling this method every frame. And then the clicking button, it doesn't happen as fast as frames. So we keep pressing on the button perhaps like 12 times, 8 times each frame. So we want to avoid doing that. And one of the ways is having some sort of a boolean. And let's say you have a door or, or a lever or let's say a golden chest. So you will interact with that thing once only, right? So that's going to be the basis of the interaction system that we're going to build. We can improve it later, but we're going to use the simplest form possible. Let's go ahead and make a boolean, call it interacted. And this is the boolean that is going to indicate if we have interacted with the objects or not. By default, it's false, meaning we haven't interacted with it yet. So let's go to the on interact. And in here, we're going to go ahead and click if we have not interacted with it. So we have to check if it's false by adding the exclamation mark before it. Or you can go ahead and write this one it doesn't equal true. Or you can go ahead and go equal equal false. All of it does the same thing, but I like it to be concise. So if it's not interacted, we have to make it true. 
interact and write this here so if we haven't interacted with it we make it interacted and we write the interactive part we don't have any logic for the else so I'm gonna remove it and let's see how it works alright let's clear the log and we come here if we click E once it's gonna only fire once and if we keep clicking nothing else is gonna happen and you can do this one thing you can check the private variables in a script in the inspector in one way and this is by clicking these three dots and going to debug and scroll down to your script and you will see the private methods which is this one you will see that is interacted became true and it's by default false if I stop the game and don't forget to go back to normal because this is gonna be, be confusing for you all right um, so we have created a collidable object an interactable object we have one small thing left which is to make this method protected virtual void in case we want to use it by something else and uh, what else I think that's everything for here so with these scripts we have built the basis of our interaction system which will consist of an objects that actually collidable and then we can use those collidable objects to interact with the player and further on in the next videos we will learn how to use the interaction system as opening doors opening chest and levers and etc i hope you liked this episode and if you did hit the like and subscribe also hit the bell button to get all the notifications and if you got any questions write it in the comments below or just join our discord channel which you will find a lot of people like you who are actually learning i'll see you all in the next video bye bye